All right, bye bye. You'll be okay. <laughs> Spoiled. This is very bittersweet. I don't know how I feel about this. This is strange. This is very unusual. It feels so empty now. How does that look? Well, for the first time in almost 10 years, this basement corner here is open. It's very different. It's odd. It's something I'm not used to. Pretty much as soon as we moved into this house, I found stray rabbits in my neighborhood and took them in. And then once those rabbits passed away, I found two more rabbits, mac and cheese, and put them in this corner as well. So this is, this is a whole new world for me. At, uh, I mean, there's still some stuff over here. I got some boxes, eBay boxes, a storage container filled with Timothy and hay uh, that the rabbits eat that I will donate to the rabbit foster that uh, I worked with, with mac and cheese. So there's still some stuff here, but. I don't think I told the full story of how I found mac and cheese. We got a little bit of a problem here. Found two more rabbits in my neighborhood. So back in February of 2023, I found mac and cheese, two little bunnies that had escaped someone's backyard. But before rescuing them from outside, I had been keeping an eye on them for uh, a fair amount of time. If you hear some rumbling over on the side here, some scratching and clawing, it's not your imagination. It is, it's, it's a pet turtle. Right now he thinks it's a great time to climb up and down his uh, sunning rock. But I digress. I had been keeping an eye on mac and cheese for a, a while now. So uh, basically they were left unattended out in someone's backyard. Someone had a fenced in yard, their fence was also falling apart. And they just had these two little bunnies running around outside. Uh, no real cover. I, I don't think they had an actual cage for them. They may, they may be had like some type of pen area for them, but I don't know if the rabbits were actually contained in them that often. I mean, these, these poor little guys were out in the rain, the sun, the heat, the cold, everything just completely exposed. Maybe sometimes they could go under the deck and hide if it was really bad weather. Uh, I think they had a little like garage thing, like a little uh, shed that maybe the door was open occasionally. I saw them sometimes they would put down trash cans on the ground, like laying them down so I guess the rabbits could hide in them. These people were, I, I don't know if they were intentionally neglectful. I think they were, they were just partially ignorant. They didn't really understand that, okay, yes, it is a rabbit. It, rabbits can be outside. A lot of people keep their rabbits outside, but they keep them in pens cages, some type of hutch where the rabbit can go in, they can have hay and food and, and warmth. Uh, but just having them run around in your backyard, just eating grass uh, with barely any cover is neglectful. So that really frustrated me for months. 
because I would walk around the neighborhood with rivers. We'd go on walks and I would pass this house all the time and I'd see these poor little bunnies outside in the rain or the heat. They just looked miserable. They looked not well taken care of. Uh, their children would come out sometimes and play with them, maybe, but I just like, it, it would stress me out to a point where I would get very anxious at night in the middle of winter. So I would be lying in bed. I remember we had a really rough winter at one point. It got down to like the single digits. I'm talking like eight, nine degrees. And these bunnies were just in the cold. It was so cold that the state had issued like a, a warning, like do not go outside for too long. It's too freaking cold. I got so irritated one day, uh, one of those like nine degree days. Uh, and I started knocking on the door, I somehow got a hold of the person living there and I offered them a an old cage that I had. Now before this, I had found two other rabbits in my neighborhood <laughs> that I had taken care of for, one I had for about six, seven years. She actually had, she got cancer and we had to unfortunately put her down after having surgery on her paw and her face. She just, you know, she was not very comfortable, but she was full of life, just a crazy little bunny. And then another one uh, that we had found as well, and she ended up living to be like nine or 10. She just, you know, got old and um, it was just her time. I'd found these rabbits maybe six or seven months after we had moved into this house. So we were just getting everything settled. I, I had a little space to myself, the basement, uh, my little office, and uh, it was taken over by rabbits and Timothy and dust and hay and poop and all kinds of blankets and toys. And so never really had a space for myself. So going back to the neighbor with mac and cheese, I gave him one of my cages for your, the rabbits. I said, you should, you know, build a cage for them so they could have something to go into. And sure enough, February comes around. Uh, and I'm walking rivers. We're walking by the house and out squirms. I want to say it was cheese. She wiggled her way under the fence and she's out. And I'm like, Oh, you gotta be kidding me. I didn't know what to do at this point. I didn't want to tell the owner of the house that their rabbit was out. So I decided to rush rivers back home. I came back in my car with a little carrying case that I could uh, scoop her up in. Sure enough, as I'm coming back over there, out pops a little Mac. So it's pretty funny. I'm trying to catch these, these two little bunnies. I'm technically on this person's property, right? So there's a fence where their backyard is, and I'm kind of in the frontish part of their house uh, onto the side of their house. I'm trying to catch these little bunnies. And the the guy who lives there, comes walking out. And I do one of these, like, you know, I'm on the ground, like trying to, like on my stomach, wiggling over and trying to catch them. Out, out he comes walking to his car, like blinders on. And I stand up being like, oh, oh, hey, like you caught me. Didn't even notice me. The guy didn't even see me. Got in his car, drove away. And I was like, okay. I catch Mac and cheese. Um, they're a mess. Mac is so skinny. He is covered in pee and poop. Uh, I mean, he is so skinny. Like you could feel his rib cage, his back bones, his hip bones. His hair is disgusting. Uh, cheese is in a little bit better shape, uh, but she's still also kind of gross. I brought them home and I put them in my basement bathroom. And I waited until my wife got home, Amanda, and then we're like, what do we do? And she's like, I guess we're, we're keeping these two rabbits. My other two rabbits, now one had already passed away at this point and one was getting older. It's a funny story. They didn't technically have names because I didn't want to give them names. One was white, one was black, and we called them white one, black one for six to seven years and nine years. <laughs> 
We should have just named them. But anyway, luckily we had cages. We had all this stuff. We were, we were set. Uh, you know, I took care of, of poor little Mac. His teeth were a problem. Uh, he had a, a jaw that was too long. It's like a birth defect. So his teeth just overshot. Like he had a giant buck, buck teeth, like a huge overbite. We got his, his teeth removed. Luckily, I was able to find this rabbit foster organization. So, and then technically, I guess they adopted the two rabbits and I was going to be their foster. It still felt like I owned them to an extent. And they were going to foot all the bills for all their medical stuff, all this, all that. She is pretty much clean bill of health. She just needed to be spayed or fixed. Is it fixed or spayed? I can never remember, which for the female male animal situation. Poor little Mac needed to get his teeth clipped and removed. And that was a stressful time. We had to go to this animal dentist and it was apparently like $2,500 to get his teeth removed. Quite a lofty bill. I was anxious about that because the poor little bunny had to be put under. They had to remove his teeth. I remember the dentist saying, it's a very tough surgery for this little bunny. But as you all know, he survived perfectly fine. I still have his teeth around here somewhere. I don't know why I still have them. I should throw them away. That was just the beginning. Got his teeth removed. He finally healed up. Had to take him to the vet a couple of times to get checked up here and there. Check on his teeth. Check on this. Check on that. Lots of going back and forth, okay? So that's just within the first, I think we are not even in, we're in like March or April at this point. And then soon after that, the poor little guy starts getting abscesses in his nose. Some type of, he got sickness from something. We don't know. It might have been somewhere in the, the foster when we were at, uh, we took them to like a bunny event. Might have gotten it from another bunny. I don't know. But he grew these abscesses in his nose. It's just an infection. And it was, it was just a lot of, okay, we would get one abscess removed. The poor little guy had to be put under. They removed it. I had to give him medicine, had to give him this, had to give him that. Then another abscess would come back all over again. Had to go, he had to be put under, get removed. Did this three or four times. I'm not even kidding you. This poor little bunny was in and out of the vet every other week, it felt like. It was a lot. Gosh, that was a lot. Cheese, fine. <laughs> Nothing wrong with her. So finally, finally, after about 10, 12 months of medical issues with poor little Mac, finally stabilized. Everything's good. We think we finally got the infection. The vet like carved a chunk out of his nose. And I think she just got all the infection that time. So he's got a big old dent on his little nose. And every other Sunday, the foster home would have these little adoption day events. I took mac and cheese there two or three times. And on this most recent adoption day event, dropped them off early and I had to pick them up early because I had some other plans to do and stuff like that. It's usually an all day event. It starts at 1030 and ends at... Uh, like five, five thirty. I came a little bit early. I came at like three to pick them up. And as I'm walking in, because normally it's it's just a house. It's a big house that they've converted into this rabbit care facility. This is all these cages kind of in the living room, dining room area. As I walk in, I'm looking around for them because I put them in the cage earlier. And uh, they're like, oh, are you here to pick up mac and cheese? Guess what? They're being adopted. And just like that, they're gone. I'm lucky enough that I somehow decided to go there early and pick them up. And I, I got to meet the people that were adopting them. And I told them all about them, their stories and medical horrors. And uh, I said, why don't you guys come back to my house and I'll give you their cage, uh, treats, blankets, all kinds of things, because I don't need this stuff. And I, you know, uh, luckily was able to get a chance to say goodbye to them. And Amanda, my wife, was also got the chance to say goodbye to them as well. It was a very quick, like, okay, they're adopted and it's gone. It was just like, like that, gone within a second. Uh, and you know what? I'm, yeah, I'm not going to lie. It's a little... It's a little quiet and depressing down here. I don't have as many little creatures to talk to. You know, it's the, the turtle's, you know, one thing. He's kind of more independent kind of guy. He likes to sunbathe and just kind of, you know, 
he can't really do too much. He's not the most cuddly animal, but he's, you know, friendly and he likes to be pet and talk to. And Rivers is, you know, likes to play and go for walks. And, you know, I go upstairs and pet him a lot throughout the day, but he doesn't particularly like to come downstairs into the basement for some reason. I think maybe it's just, it's, there's too much stuff going on down here with me editing and all this stuff. But yeah, it's, it's different. This is the first time that I've not really had a little creature or two down here uh, that I can talk to, that I can pick up, that I can pet, that I can play with. So it's it was it was a quiet, somber day. Um, past couple days, mac and cheese got adopted on Sunday. It's only Wednesday now, and it's just so different down here. It's I like that it's clean. I like that it's there's not clutter and crap and dust and all kinds of things here. There's still a couple more things I got to pick up, but I like the fact that I kind of have a space to myself. Will I be fostering some more bunnies? Probably soon. I'm not going to say soon, probably eventually. I would like to enjoy this space for just a little bit. I could, I could do things here. I could make things. I could, I don't know, just have a, a, a spot to come down and hang out by myself. That was the story of Mac and Cheese. The adventure, the odyssey, the legacy of two little crazy bunnies. I've already gotten clips and pictures from the, uh, the person that adopted them. So we, we, we keep in touch. So that's at least cool. But I rescued them. I brought them back from the brink of neglect. And brought out their little crazy bunny personalities. And everyone here got to see them. Very lucky. You're all lucky. <laughs> okay, quick little thing I for, forgot to mention. The original owners of Mac and Cheese did get replacement bunnies just a few weeks after losing Mac and Cheese. That really frustrated both Amanda and I. Uh, but yeah, they're still, they're still just out in a backyard with a cage that I gave them that apparently they're not using. They're just out alone without barely any cover. Uh, two more bunnies. And unfortunately, because I, I checked on this prior to rescuing Mac and Cheese as I watched them sitting outside in the cold, in the rain, just looking very sad. I checked into how my county deals with animal neglect. And technically what happened with mac and cheese is neglect. And Baltimore County just wants you to call the non-emergency police line and report the neglect. So I'm not sure how the police would take to me calling them being like, hey, I noticed there's a pet rabbit that's outside in someone's backyard. Not, you know, being well taken care of. They're going to be like, eh, it's a rabbit. Not like a dog or a cat. I just feel like there's a weird gray area. And, and, and I can only contact animal control if I witness abuse. So I haven't technically seen abuse. I've seen neglect. So I don't know. Maybe I'll still try contacting animal control again. Uh, I'm pretty sure I did initially with mac and cheese. I never heard anything back. But long story short, the original owners of mac and cheese still have new bunnies and they are still neglecting them and they are still outside in a backyard not being taken care of. <sighs> Luckily, it's starting to warm up a little bit. It's starting to get into spring and summer, so I don't feel as stressed. But once winter comes along, I just feel very anxious knowing that there's animals in my close vicinity that are not being well taken care of. And I feel a partial bit of responsibility and like this nagging voice in my head being like, you, you need to be able to fix this. You need to be able to help. You need to be able to help. Why aren't you helping? So that's, uh, that's an anxious thing I got to deal with, but, uh, it's still hard. It was still hard giving up Mac and cheese. I will say that. There was a part of me when I was driving them to the uh, adoption event, I almost turned around. Cause I was like, eh, Maybe I should just keep them, you know, at this point. But I was like, I just, I can't. But still, you know, Ohana means family. And I don't, I don't give up. I don't abandon animals that I take in. Hence my turtle that I've had for uh, almost 15 years. Ex-girlfriend, 
she was getting ready to move to Tennessee and she had no one to take the turtle. And I was like, why didn't you think about this before the moving day? That's a whole other story. But I said, I'll take the turtle. Can you help me find a person that could, you know, take the turtle full time? I will be a temporary foster. That was almost 15 years ago. I still have the turtle. Because Ohana means family. And if in Ohana means, and in, in family means you don't pass off animals. You keep them and you care for them. The end. Also, I don't have animals to remind me that it's dinner time. So usually the two little bunnies would come over here and be like, hey, it's time to feed us. Is it dinner time? What time is it? What do you want? You want dinner? You gotta remind me. You gotta say something. Dinner time. Dinner time. Want some bugs? You gotta get those bugs. Get them. Get them. This is an absolute mess right now. Look at this. This is a mess. I just cleaned their cage last night, and this is what they do. This is the mess that they leave me with. Insane. Why are you doing this? Pick up after yourself. The basement's a mess all the time. Don't turn away from me. You gotta listen to me. I'm talking to you. This is a mess in here. An absolute disaster. Don't push the camera out of the way. Don't eat your poop. Bye. Uh -huh.